Hey everybody, this is Patchy from Infinities.com. Uh, in this V blog, I'm going to be talking about email injection. Basically, email injection occurs when an email form is added to a web page that submits data to a web application. A malicious user may exploit the MIME format to amend additional information to the message being sent. This is possible because the MIME format uses a character return to delimit the information in a message. Adding character return to submitted form data can allow a simple application to be used to send thousands of messages at once. A malicious spammer could use this tactic to send a large number of messages uh, anonymously. An email ejection flaw exists in our old forms and since we recently changed to a new form I can show you how it works. The old form plugin that I used to use um, for the website allowed you to send emails to any user kind of as like a, a personal message system. Basically all you had to do is click on the user to go to their uh, profile page and then click on the send email option. And then uh, you just typed in some various information and you're able to send an email to that person. Using the Tamper Data plugin in Firefox we can uh, modify posts uh, as they're being sent. Just push send and then push tamper. Um, all right. Here's the various information that's being sent. Uh, as you can see, this is horribly insecure already. It shows the email address of the user you're sending a message to. Um, normally, this wouldn't be here because that's just poor security. I could just change this here and send a message to anybody I want. But most of the time, you won't see that. So I'm just going to pretend like it's not there and kind of demonstrate how you would do email ejection to uh, a little bit more secured uh, email application. So basically, um, most of the time you would see this reply to address or something like that, some field where you put in your return address. And basically we can just put in the character return, which is the hex value A. In HTML that's just percent zero A. So in the MIME format, there's several different header uh, information that a, a malicious user can manipulate. There's the who it's being sent to, there's the subject field, um, sometimes you can even change the message. You can change the, the CC field or the BCC field. And uh, yeah. The first thing I'm going to show you is how a spammer could add the to field using the character return and then send emails to several different people. Alright, there you can see it there. I'm going to send another message to uh, the email address infinityexists at gmail.com. Switch OK, OK. And as you can see, the email was delivered successfully. Then I'm going to go over to my Gmail account here and show you that I received the message. And as you can see in the header information, there was two uh, email addresses that it was sent to. Not, a, not only was it sent to Patchy, but it was also sent to this email address here. So as you can see, like a spammer could uh, manipulate that to field and send to like thousands of different people. All right. Um, some email applications on websites don't allow you to change the subject of the message, but you can use uh, mail injection to modify that subject. Just do the, the character return, subject colon, and then your new message or your new subject. Um, as you can see, I'm using uh, percent twenty to uh, denote spaces. Um, in some web applications, you'll be able to manipulate the message, but the way the, this form is set up, you can't do that. 
but the way that you would do that would be to use two character returns and then just start typing your message. You also could change the content type and allow you to put into like HTML code and stuff like that. All right, if we go over to my uh, email account here. You can see that the subject was changed. Um, if you look at the header, you, you can see that there's two subjects in there and the, the later one overrides the first one. So, um, you know, this is just how a spammer could use mail injection to send out mass amounts of spam. The last mail injection attack I'm going to show you uh, wouldn't be used by a spammer, but more of a uh, attacker um, trying to retrieve some information. On some websites there's a lost password recovery form where you just basically put in your email address and it'll send you back what your password is. Basically what you can do is you can add the you can inject the BCC field into the message and then have that password not only sent to uh, the real user but also to you. So basically if I went to a website and I want to get um, you know, the admin's password or whatever, or some user's password. I could type in that user's email address, then type in uh, the character return, then BCC colon, and then my address, and then not only would the password be sent to his email address, but also to uh, my email address. And I'll just show you how that works here. Yep, it's just the percent zero A again, and then BCC colon, and then, uh, and then the email address of the attacker. And if I go over to this Gmail account, you can see that the message was also sent to me. And since it's a BCC uh, field, um, the tag or email address uh, doesn't show up in the message. And as you can see, it was also sent to uh, the other email address. Alright, before I end this video, I want to show you one more flaw in these shitty forms. Uh, this flaw was brought to my attention by Crash Overrun and basically uh, it's a full path disclosure flaw. Um, what you do is you change one of these git variables up here uh, in the URL to an empty array. Basically what this will do is uh, cause an error and, and basically the web server will spit out the full path to uh, the file that had the error. This isn't very dangerous by itself but you can use this kind of information for different packs like uh, local file inclusion and stuff like that. Hope you like this video. I'll see you later.